What's up guys, Ted here with the A-Team. Today we're talking about beauty lighting. What do we gotta think about when we do it and what are three lighting setups that we can do right now? Let's do this. Today I'm here with Valentina V, who I'm super excited to have here because she is not only the new host of Formative Film School, but to kick things off, I asked her to host a couple of episodes as a guest first. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about beauty lighting, and I know all about this because that's what I used to do exclusively, and now I work with companies like Morphe and ColourPop and M Cosmetics. And the main tip that I have is the lighting should be soft, because you're trying to show off how beautiful the person is. So soft, soft, soft lighting. In terms of the actual shoot, are there any of the details we gotta think about? You gotta think about who the client is. So if you're trying to advertise foundation, you gotta have clear skin, you gotta have soft lighting. If you're trying to advertise eyes, maybe you do something a little bit more crazy, a little bit more avant-garde. So remember to tailor everything in your shoot to the actual production's needs. I know that sounds a little bit vague, so I asked me to go over a couple of different options. We're gonna do three different types of beauty lighting and go through those setups right now. Let's do this. So for our first lighting setup, what are we going for? We're going for the basic commercial look. Any sort of Pantene, Maybelline, CoverGirl ad, this is what you see. You wanna have as much soft lighting in the front as possible and you also want it to be even. So if I only had one light dome on one side, then I would have shadow on the other. So I put two 120Ds with the light dome twos on it. And it's important that both had the grid attached. So as for the background, how did you light that too? Well, you wanna make sure that the background is bright. And even though the background here technically is white, it's so far away that it fades into gray. So you wanna introduce a light source and point it directly at the background. And for that, we took two light panels, LS1Ss. So then after you did the background, I saw that you added two more floppies on the sides too. So floppies, for people that don't know, basically they're two flags that are gonna cut light. Well, the floppies were for negative fills. Ideally for beauty lighting, just like in makeup, you have contouring on the sides of your face and you want the brightest area in the middle, same thing for lighting. And because the studio has white in other places, there's white light pinging off everywhere, you wanna make sure that none of that goes back onto the talent. Yeah, so V is using a technique here called negative fill, basically to block some of that ambient light that could be bouncing around in the area, and that way you get that soft light just from the front, and it's not pinging in from the sides. So then finally, I saw that you added one more modifier. What was that? There was a little bit too much shadow underneath her chin, and that's not very flattering, especially when you're lighting from two light sources, it can create a cross shadow. So all I did was introduce a nice silver bounce directly underneath her, but not so high up that it gets into the frame and that diffused the light even more. Giving a little bit of that bounce, a little return filling in those shadows. Mm -hmm. I love it, let's go check out a little bit of that footage right now. All right, so moving on to our second lighting setup, V, what are we doing here? We're doing an 80s vintage look. I was really inspired by the magazine covers of Essence Magazine in the 80s, by the Soul Glow commercial from Coming to America, that ethereal, glowy. So Diva, angelic yeah. look. We're keeping the lights in the front, those 120Ds with the light domes, those aren't moving. We want that nice, soft lighting, and that's gonna give it to us. And it's also going to have those eye lights in the front and make her eyes sparkle. But we wanted to change up the lighting to make it more 80s. So we took those LS1Ss that were pointed at the white background and instead we pointed them at the talent from both sides and this created a nice rim light, a little soft halo that fell all over her hair, all over her shoulders as she was turning mm -hmm. and it really gave it that 80s vibe. That angelic beauty light. Now for the background I noticed that you changed something else. You're not going white background anymore. No, we wanted to have like a nice caramel tan to complement her skin tone but it was a little too bland. So we added a little accent light right in the middle. A very spotty 120D with a little bit of an orange gel on it to create that vignette in the background. Yeah, by centering that light instead of coming evenly, you get those dark edges around the edge, right? Exactly, Love and you it. can even add more vignette in post. And finally, I saw you had one more light that was hitting the camera. What was that for? Well, there's a bit of hazy aspect to all of these videos and photos from the 80s, and instead of bringing in a fog machine and hazing the whole room, what you can do is you can just take a tiny light, a Aperture Mini 20, and I pinged it directly into the lens and that created a light wash and together with this star filter it looked totally 80s and it creates a little texture to the light that's coming in. You've got little cross hatches here that catch the light so it makes that little X mark on all the lights that come through into your camera. Let's take a look at some of that footage right now.
All right, so moving on to our third and final setup. What are we going for here? We're going for an avant-garde sort of editorial look, like straight off the runway. So I noticed that you actually got rid of your soft lighting in the front. I thought you said soft, soft lighting was the first rule. I know, I did. Well, rules are meant to be broken, you know? And if your client is cool with it, and it's cool to let you play around with all sorts of fun slashes and gels, then why not? So instead of that soft lighting, what did you opt for instead? The harshest lighting possible. <laughs> we right. took a 300D and we put a Fresnel on it to focus that spot even more because I wanted to have harsh, harsh lighting. I created my own Kukuloris, my own little cookie cutter, because yeah. I wanted to focus on the model's hair, on the model's eyes, and on the model's lips. So I took some black wrap and we put it on a C-stand and I put the model in her spot just to make sure that all of the slashes and all of the slits in the black wrap perfectly molded to her face. Now for the background, I noticed that you changed out the background as well. What are we going for here? Well, I wanted to do a completely different color palette. We already did a neutral color palette and a warm color palette. So this one I wanted a cool color palette. We brought in a light blue backdrop, but I didn't want to leave it light blue because that's not very hardcore. I wanted a hardcore look oh. because that's what her makeup looked like. So we dropped all the light off of it. So it became a dark blue and instead introduced just one slash down the center. The key to getting it right, number one, is hard light, just like on her eyes. But you also need something to cut it with. So in our case, we use just black flags to cut it. And it's important that you don't just use barn doors because those are too close to the light source and they'll create very fuzzy slashes. So you want to get those slashes, those cutters, as close to the background as possible. Absolutely. Remember, hard light, size, and distance. In this case, that distance of the flag is making those hard shapes. And then finally, I think that you added one more light on the side. What is that for? I wanted to have some sort of interesting fill light on the side because that's where the majority of her look was happening and I just wanted it to be colorful I wanted to complement the other lighting and I went with this 120d with just a nice purple gel on it so in contrast to that blue lighting that we have going on that blue background we've got some purple lights coming in on the fill side adding in that color contrast so then finally for our last element we went beyond the lighting and we introduced something practical right what was that I wanted to use this guy which is a photography prism and it's able to manipulate any light that you shine at it. So I just used a regular old flashlight and I shone it directly into the prism and then I brought that prism as close to the lens as possible. It distorts the light and it creates these really interesting lens effects. So make sure that you're careful with this kind of stuff. Practical lens effects look amazing, but again, they are baked into your footage. Make sure but... that your client knows you're doing this. Hey, <laughs> awesome. So now that you know about that, you know about the lighting, let's go check out some of that footage right now. Alrighty guys, so there's your episode of 4 Minute Film School with Valentina V on Beauty Lighting. If you like this episode, make sure you find Aperture on Facebook, Instagram, The Works. Find Valentina on Twitter at Valentina V. She will be answering questions there, so if you got any questions, leave a comment there below. And the question of the week is, have you ever seen a beauty commercial that particularly stood out to you? We want to know about it. The best answer gets an Aperture MW. So think of something creative, post it in the comments below. But there you go. I'm Ted from the A-Team. Thank you for watching this episode, and we will catch you guys next time.